All right, let's see. Should be okay. Hi there, I am Drew Badger, the English Fluency Guide and founder of EnglishAnyone.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about, well, I'm just going to get you fluent in this video, but it looks like live is working. Uh, we'll see if uh, chat is working as well. I'll just give this a moment. This should be a fun lesson, especially if you are new to my lessons and my channel. Uh, and we'll just see how this goes. But hopefully, uh, if I teach you well, you should become a bit more fluent and you should actually feel that process as it happens. Uh, but I want to make sure chat is working. Okay, so it looks like we do have a few people. Oh, look at that. And chat now is displaying again back on my phone. F fantastic. Great. Let's see if, uh, hopefully, I'll keep my eye on both of those. Oh, oh, hello, Zaymas says H. Ray. Nice to see you there. Okay, this is great. Hopefully chat is working. All right, look at that. I guess, yeah, I think we are actually working and it's displaying all of the chats, which is nice. All right, but I will keep my eye on both of those. So I apologize if I don't notice something as it comes up. I do have chat now on the phone, which is great. It was not working for a while, but now it is. All right, but it looks like everybody is displaying. All right, so let's get into the lesson today. Hopefully everyone is doing well, wherever you happen to be. I know some people, uh, they're watching these videos like really late at night or very early in the morning. But remember, you can benefit from these videos at any time of the day. You don't have to just like stay up and watch it live. You'll learn the exact same lesson, even if you watch the, uh, the recorded version later. All right, but yeah, it looks like fantastic. Chat is working on the phone. Now I don't have to keep like looking back and forth. All right, so again, in this video, yes, in, uh, in NYC, it's 9 p.m. Can we use a preposition at the end of a sentence? <laughs> Look at Blackbeard already in there. You should type that question into Google. We can save that one uh, for later, but it depends. Uh, often you will hear natives using that in uh, like in conversations, uh, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video in any detail, just because I want to talk about something else, but it will help you understand English better and communicate more fluently. <clears throat> so I had a picture of an elephant up here and I'd like to start with that. Uh, so this is, uh, it's a pretty popular, I don't know about, well, maybe popular, but fairly well-known uh, story uh, that's in many different traditions. <clears throat> like going back to Buddhism and people still use it today when talking about things. But this is the, the parable or the story of the blind men and the elephant. So I'm going to just tell you this story very quickly uh, and then use this because this is a really great way to understand how your mind works and how fluency happens. So the elephant story is actually not about like language learning, but it works perfectly for people who are learning languages. So I'm going to draw uh, my best example of an elephant here. That looks pretty good. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> okay, here, so you have the tail back here and the big legs of the elephant like that. All right, it's a pretty good elephant. Now, the story of the blind men and the elephant goes like this. There was a elephant being brought to a town. Yes, I'm good at drawing. <laughs> I'm not trying to take time. This is not a drawing lesson in how to draw like elephants or whatever, but you get the idea. Uh, and I want to be quick with these instead of spend a lot of time trying to draw it very nicely, but you can see what it is. And I'm telling you it's an elephant. Uh, so in this example, uh, this was an elephant brought to a town and people who had not uh, seen or heard of an elephant before, they just heard, wow, this amazing animal is coming to town and we all want to know, you know, they want to know what the animal is like. Uh, but as just kind of an interesting test, some blind men, so people who could not see, some blind men uh, were brought to uh, kind of explore the elephant. And so they were touching different parts of the elephant. We'll have a guy over here. So one guy was touching the tail of the elephant and he said, the elephant is like a rope. The elephant is like a rope. Another guy was kind of touching the, the, like the side of the elephant right here, and he said the elephant is like a wall. And another guy was touching the legs. So he touched the leg down here and he said, wow, the elephant is like a, it's like a tree trunk. And another guy touched the, the trunk of the elephant 
And he said, wow, the elephant is like a snake. It's like a very thick snake. And another guy was, I don't know how he got up here, but he was able to touch the big ear of the elephant. <clears throat> and he said, wow, the elephant is like a fan, like a fan that you fan yourself with. And uh, another final guy over here, he touched, this is called the tusk, tusk, the tusk of the elephant. And he said, wow, the elephant is like a spear. The elephant is like a spear. All right. So there's, I won't go into like the, the deep, you know, history or anything about this, but the basic idea is that each one of these people, they are correct, but they're not really getting the whole picture of something. And my idea of sharing this with you is that it works exactly the same way with learning languages, specifically building vocabulary uh, and fluency. And so as an example, let's say you, you hear a word in English for the first time like, uh, like untie. Now you have not heard that word before. Let's imagine maybe you know this word already to untie something. <clears throat> Now, if you hear the word untie, maybe you don't really know what that means, or maybe you see somebody else doing something, like they're, they're, they're taking like their shoelaces and they're untying them, all right? But you only have one example, so untie is kind of like this over here. We'll say untie is like the tail of the elephant. It's simply one example, and trying to help you understand like the core meanings of like the pieces of words like un but you don't know what, what any of this means. You don't know what tie means. You don't know what untie means. You're just getting an idea like untie and you see someone untying their shoes. But maybe we also hear another word like, maybe we hear un and we hear something else like, uh, what's a good example, like unpack. And so you see someone like there's a bunch of boxes in a van or something and you see them taking those boxes out or they have a box and they're taking things out of the box. So you hear unpack. And you start thinking like, oh, like unpack is over here. And so you're getting another example of something and slowly your brain will begin making a connection between these different things as it gets a, a bigger picture of these things. Let's say you also hear unsure. So you see someone, they, they look maybe not so confident, and you, you don't even know the word sure by itself, but you hear the word unsure. And again, slowly, you start making a connection between, huh, I wonder, maybe this part of the word un over here means like not, or the opposite of something. So we can have tie something, and we can also have untie something, or we can have pack and unpack. We can be sure or we can be unsure as well. And as you get all of these different examples, that's where you really start to understand what the elephant is. Or in the case of vocabulary, you really start to understand what vocabulary means. All right? Now I want to make sure people get this idea because it's very important. Uh, I talk a lot about the difference between learning English as a second language and learning English as a first language. So when you learn English as a second language, it's often like this. And you can think about this just getting one example of something as like getting a translation through your native language. So you get one meaning, like you learn something uh, in English through your native language, and that's it. So you make a connection like, wow, the elephant is like a rope. But you don't get all these other examples over here that really help you understand the whole picture of the word or phrase or vocabulary or grammar or whatever, okay? So the parable of the elephant, again, it's a very, uh, a very good example of showing people how they can learn something, but it's not really the complete picture and it doesn't really help your mind understand something. So being blind and touching only the elephant tail, it doesn't really tell you much about what the whole elephant is like, okay? But as you get more examples, and if you could see the whole thing, wow, then you can get, wow, like the complete picture of how the whole thing works together. Okay, And so vocabulary is exactly the same thing. The more words you hear, uh, like let's say you hear unsafe, or you hear unwelcome. Wow, you probably can guess that un means no or not or the opposite of something like that. So if you feel safe, yes, like you, ex you experience some situation, ah, I feel very safe, 
But when you feel unsafe, oh no, there's maybe some trouble somewhere, you can hear some weapons, some gunfire, and it really makes you think, ah, maybe I'm, I'm not safe over here. Again, I'm just giving a, a basic example. You probably know what all of these words are, but the point is it's hearing all of these different examples that really help you understand uh, how you should be learning something like a native rather than like a student. So usually what happens, let me erase my, my elephant picture over here. So in the ESL, and the English is a second language approach, Basically, you get maybe like one example of something, and then you repeat that example again and again. But notice how the man touching the tail of the elephant, uh, he can keep touching the tail, but it doesn't help him understand the elephant any better. Okay? So you don't become more fluent by like just saying untie or touching the elephant tail again and again and again. Okay? So a lot of people think they become fluent simply by repeating something again and again. I just say untie, untie, untie. But that doesn't help me understand what un or tie mean. It's only when you start connecting that and building a bigger network between all of these different things. That's when you start building fluency. All right? So the ESL approach is to usually get one example, usually through a translation, and then I'm going to repeat that again and again. But you notice you're repeating something, even if you try saying something, you don't feel more fluent. You could be in a conversation and you say something, but you don't really understand it like the person understanding the whole elephant. So the EFL approach, EFL, so English, as a second language versus English as a first language, uh, this is where we really start understanding the whole picture and we really feel a good, strong understanding of vocabulary and grammar. And I'll, I'll give a few more examples of that in this video. Uh, and also, if people have questions, I will answer those uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, but hopefully, this makes sense. Let me know if this idea makes sense. If it does, like, click the like button just so I can see people are like, ah, like, I get what Drew is saying with this. Remember, the typical idea about language learning is that you want to get like a whole bunch of examples and there's not much of a connection between those things. You don't spend a lot of time focusing on them. And so your brain thinks that an elephant is a rope, all right, instead of an elephant being an elephant. So in this same way, if we just learn the word like untie, all right, like if I give, uh, I don't know, some examples in some different languages or, or like an alien in language, uh, an alien language in the same way, it's like if you keep hearing like un something, un something, un something, un something, you can guess, ah, I see what that means now, okay? So you don't, you don't become fluent by getting like one word and repeating it again and again. You build fluency actually through your understanding of that, and you can feel this actually uh, as, you, as you build that understanding. You really feel more fluent, you feel more excited, and that's when you can really start using the language. So you notice a pattern emerging, you notice a pattern coming out, uh, and that's where you can feel very confident about using something. And once you understand the pattern, you can actually take that and then apply it to other things. Like if you've got like, uh, like to be employed, for example, you could think, I wonder if like unemployed means I don't have a job. And you discover, yeah, like that's true. And so that's how vocabulary is born. So people take ideas, they have like to be employed. So employed means I'm working for someone else, I'm doing something, but we put that un at the beginning and now we've got unemployed, I'm not working, okay? But it's because you've got the understanding of all these things together, you get to see the whole elephant and how the whole thing works. And when you can see the whole elephant, that's where you really feel confident. That's where the fluency comes from, okay? So you don't get fluent by repeating things again and again. You get fluent by developing a strong understanding of the language, and that's when you can start speaking. Now, it's certainly possible you can get into a conversation and speak. Some people just have lots of confidence in general and they can get out and use things even if they don't really understand them very well. But most people are going to feel more shy because they're translating, they're still thinking about things in their native language, okay? So again, 
If you don't feel like you understand something well, you should be getting more examples. You want to look at kind of different angles of things, just like people are looking at different parts of the elephant. So different angles. So instead of just repeating something where you're, you're going in the same direction, the same way, you want to get different angles. So we're going to look at the elephant head and the tusks and the, and the legs and the tail and the body and the, and the ears. We're going to look at all of that. And that's how we get fluent. All right. So when people say you need to speak in order to get fluent, it's not true. Speaking is something that happens after you become a strong, like you really have a strong understanding of the language. And that's when you feel confident speaking. All right. Now I can give a bunch more examples uh, of this one. But I wanted to check chat, make sure we're working over here and make sure that we have, I think chat is working over here. All right. Yes, I'm just checking to make sure the chat is actually working in the same way. Yes, okay, I think we are, nice. All right, yes, and again, I wanted to say a good evening or a good afternoon or a hello, or wherever you guys happen to be. Uh, let's see. All right, but I think everybody's getting it. Are you guys getting it? Let me know in the chat that you understand this. I know the, the typical English lesson is like, here's a vocabulary word and here's a definition or a translation of that. But I'm trying to get you to understand and like, uh, think in, a, in like a deeper way because if you understand this, then you can apply this in your own learning very easily. This is what we do in Fluent for Life. The whole point is to help you understand something really well so that we can really become confident speakers. We feel good about that same thing. All right, let me give you one more example uh, with another. This is called a prefix. So a prefix, meaning that you have like, you're attaching something to the beginning of a word. We also have suffixes. We can attach that to the end. This is one example of na uh, naturally varied review. So let's say we have re, all right? So we could redo something. We could redo something. We could replay. We could re-examine, re-examine. And sometimes you will see like a little dash in there to re-examine something or to rethink. As you get all these examples and you see them, like people are talking about something, like I play a game, I could rephrase something. That's another great example to rephrase. Very nice. So if I say something, yes, review, I could return the same thing. Now, not all words that begin with re are going to have the same thing, but the point is, as you learn different examples, your brain is naturally making these connections. So the more examples you get, the stronger the connections become, and that's how fluency works. Fluency is when you can communicate without thinking because your brain is just making these connections automatically. All right. Let's see, Wasim says, but learning vocabulary solely without practicing it would never make you fluent. What makes you say that? What makes you say that? All right, now you've made a claim there. What's your evidence for that? What I'm talking about is if you, like if we think about two ways of learning, the ESL approach and the EFL approach. So in ESL, what people are doing is they're getting like maybe one or two examples of something and then they try using that in a conversation. But millions of people, probably billions of people around the world are trying to learn not only English, but other second languages. Uh, and they're still not getting fluent. So repeating things is not what builds your fluency. It's understanding something. And then when you understand something well, then you speak automatically. So you don't have to, you don't have to think about like, oh, is this a translation? Am I using the right word or something like that? Uh, and so the same kind of idea, all right? So you're not thinking about what the translation is or what the grammar rules are. You just get to use it automatically because you understand it so well, all right? All right, hopefully I'm making, making, uh, making sense over here. I wanna make sure everybody's getting this, okay? So it's, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't speak. What I'm saying is, you should speak after you have a strong understanding of something. 
Because if you get into a conversation and you don't really understand something, you are not going to feel confident about that. You certainly can speak if you like. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. But most people would rather understand something really well and then feel confident using it. Okay? So it's the opposite approach of speaking first and then maybe you understand it. I'm recommending you understand first and then you speak because you will feel confident about uh, trying to use things and, and, uh, and say things after that. All right? Now, I heard the word or I saw the example of retain. So retain something. Now, I don't know. Actually, I don't think tain is a word. <laughs> but there could be maybe like an older English word or something like that where we're doing something again. But it sounds like you could actually have uh, a similar idea where we're, we're trying to hold something, but we're doing it like again and again. So if you could imagine if, if tain were an actual word, uh, again, I don't know if it is, or maybe there is a, like an, an origin of that word. Uh, but to continue doing something, all of these different examples, it's like we're going to do something again. We're going to approach it again or do it in a, in a different way, but repeat it in some way. Okay. So if I have something, I want to keep it there. Yes, I don't think tain is a word. I don't think tain is a word. It could be. Again, there are many words I don't know, but I don't think tain is a word. That's easy to Google. But many words, like maybe they were used in the past and they are not used now. But as I said, uh, not every example of a word beginning with re is going to be, like, it's not going to all follow this example. But many of them will. And all of the common examples, like these examples that we have here, will help you understand more like a native. And so you hear, ah, look, re. We're going to do that again. And so we could re-watch something. We could rewrite something. If I write something, I don't like how it is, I want to change it, I will rewrite that. Okay? Or if there's a movie I enjoy, I re-watch it. I re-watch it. All right? I could revisit someplace. Or I could revisit a topic. So if I start talking about something, I'm talking about the story of the elephant, I could revisit that in another video. I could talk about that again. Okay? You could relearn something. That's right. Actually, the, the main function of these videos is like to get you to relearn how you're learning languages. So most people think they should be learning English as a second language, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to retrain, to retrain your brain to learn this way. All right? So to retrain. So you've already been trained to learn like this. Now I'm trying to retrain you. And this is the same thing if you work at a, uh, you know, like a company and they, they start doing some kind of training. They sh show you how to do something. Uh, and then that's where you understand something better. Like after you've done it again or we're going to change what you learn and we're going to teach you something else. All right. Probably I'll re-watch this live stream. Yes, Dran, it's a good idea. And what Sam says, if you were to get a baby and shut their mouth uh, and let him get only inputs, he won't speak, will he? Well, I mean, if you actually just shut their mouth and you don't allow them to speak. Uh, but yes, so anyone who, who now feels like a bit more confident about this, they didn't say anything to me in this video. Maybe they spoke to the screen or something, but I didn't hear anything. There was no conversation happening. It's the same thing as having your mouth taped shut. So this is how I can help people become more fluent without them speaking. Okay? Because speaking, the ability to speak, comes from the confidence you have uh, about being able to communicate. So if you feel confident about the vocabulary and grammar, like you really know it well, then you want to speak. Okay? So you could think of like a, a very strict... A uh, very unreal example where we take someone and we lock them in a closet, uh, they would still learn the language. They, they might not have like a little bit of opportunity to, to practice using it. Um, but yes, like if you, if you take two people, uh, I'm going to lock both of them in a closet, like adults that are learning a new language. I could do this with children learning their native language as well. Um, but if you think about some children who maybe they are born and they, they, they're unable to speak. All right. So some children are born and they're unable to speak, but they still learn the language. They still understand what other people are saying to them. Okay. So you have lots of different examples where you have people learning by understanding something very well, not by just repeating random things and not really understanding what they're saying. 
So you can say individual words and phrases, but if you really want to have good conversations, you want to connect with people, you want to express yourself without thinking about vocabulary or grammar or translating, then you need to understand English like a native. And that's what the example of the elephant is all about. Okay? I think people are getting it, though. All right. Mohammed says, I really like the way you're teaching. Glad to hear it. All right. H says, can I put re before some words? Uh, there is a rule to follow. Thank you. Again, like you can think about anything and even just make up something. So let's say I want to, uh, I want to type. I'm typing on the computer. I don't like what I did. I could re-type that. I could, uh, if I want to explore something, maybe I go back and explore it again. I am re-exploring. You could pretty much take any verb like that where you're doing something and doing it again and just put re at the front of that. Uh, and again, this is how we create new words. We start taking pieces of things, we understand what words mean, and then we apply that same uh, rule to something else. It's really more of a pattern and it doesn't always apply, uh, but often you can do this, okay? All right, let's see. So I think re is always possible to use before verbs. Yeah, I mean you could you could do some something might sound a little bit a little bit odd, like if natives just don't use it very good. Uh, Layla gave reschedule. Yep, that's another common example. Like I wouldn't say sleep and then re-sleep. I would just say go back to sleep or sleep again, something like that. All right. All right. Let's see. So when we want to get more active vocabulary, how? All right, this is how you get an active vocabulary. The traditional way of learning says that you should learn something and then just repeat that again and again, and that's going to add it to your active vocabulary. But I'm saying it doesn't, and the reason we know it doesn't is because lots of people learn this way and they don't become fluent. Okay? But the EFL way, the point is to build a strong network of understanding in your mind, just like we're trying to understand the elephant. So we're touching different, we're, we're, we're like touching the word from different angles. And this is just one example of this, where we're just looking at the vocabulary, this, this prefix here. It's called a prefix. It's a prefix. Now, even these words right here, this is another really great example of your mind understanding these. Like maybe you've heard the word prefix before, or you've heard suffix. And you can probably think like, huh, like look at those words. Like the word fix is in both of these things. I wonder what that means. I wonder if there's a connection between those two things. So even if you don't think consciously about that, your mind is. Your mind is thinking, huh, like, what about like a word like affix? Affix, like to affix something, to stick something on something else. So we have like prefix, where we're going to put something on the front, and then we have suffix, like put something on the end or the back of something else. So even the words prefix and suffix have prefixes and suffixes themselves. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? But the point is you don't really get fluent by getting one word. You get fluent by getting a network of vocabulary. It's the network that builds your understanding. So if I take the word prefix and I just repeat it again and again and again, I'm not becoming more fluent in that word because I'm not understanding it any better. I might get physically better at saying the word if I maybe can't say it at first, like pre, pre, pref, prefix, prefix, pre, 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 and I can't say the word and I repeat it again just to get used to saying the word like prefix. Ah, now I can say prefix, prefix, prefix. But I don't really understand what that word means. It's only after I begin connecting that with other words that are related to it or in, in some other way connected to it, and that's where I feel very confident, like look at that. Like pre, prepaid, preparation. Look at that, same thing. We could have a preview, a preview of something, okay? To preview. So if you're watching a movie, you might watch another scene for that movie before that one to preview the movie. Okay, you might have a preview for like upcoming movies or you watch the movie before other people get to see it, a preview of that thing. All right, is everybody getting it? Everybody, everybody getting this? 
So the, again, ESL way, we're going to learn one word or one example, like a teacher just tells us how to do something and then we repeat that again and again. But that's not building your fluency, it's not building an active vocabulary. To build an active vocabulary, it's the connections that we get from these different things that really help us understand it. Okay. All right. Hopefully that's, uh, people, are, people are making sense about this. I thought I would give uh, maybe one more example. Do you want a pronunciation example or a vocabulary example? Which would you prefer? Let me know in the chat. Just, like, just type, you want like pronunciation or uh, another like kind of grammar vocabulary example. So this was a little bit more uh, grammar and vocabulary. Obviously you're getting to hear it as well. Vocabulary example says Tom. Both says Blackbeard. Blackbeard. You guys always want more. I think both. Oh my goodness. All right. So people keep asking, how do I increase my speaking vocabulary? And the examples I just gave, uh, that's how you do it. So you're trying to build an understanding. It's the understanding. That's what fluency is. All right. So you really want to understand uh, things very well, and that's how you can use them. All right. So let's, let's do another example. All right, we'll give another example of vocabulary. We could do pronunciation as well. Uh, we'll see how much time we have. But I think, all right, I think maybe, I wonder if I da, 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 didn't answer some people. Yes, uh, so Yuri, I guess like, uh, like a while back said, I have, like, I have the different chat open up on the computer. Uh, so, so you were saying we need to connect more words so we understand them. Yes. All right, so it's, it's, it's not even just connecting words. It's making connections in your mind between different things. But you do this uh, in different ways. So we've just shown one example, like talking about uh, prefixes and suffixes. So let's just take a word like serve and think about what this means. And we get an understanding of the word serve by hearing it used in different ways. So I'm going to ask for your help here. Uh, and when have you heard the word serve? So I don't want to just tell you a definition of it because the definition, the, the meaning of the word, the understanding, it really comes from getting lots of examples. Okay. So what I mean is like we get like this example and this example and this example and this example all these different examples, and that's how we get the understanding. So I can go to a dictionary, uh, and I can just look up, like, what does that mean? What does the word serve mean? All right, ooh, look at that. We've got some different examples over here. So we've got, like, restaurant. So restaurant example, like to serve, like serving other people. Yep, so we can, we can serve some food. I have a plate of food here, and I'm serving you so like to serve food and I think uh, Duran somebody else had the example of like serving time so serving time like prison so if I go to jail and I'm like behind bars I'm serving time so to serve time yes so like a waiter example another thing so anytime I'm serving uh, let's see we could also have like tennis or volleyball. So when we serve the ball, it's similar similar idea. Okay. So we serve the uh, like the tennis ball at the beginning of the of the round or the match or whatever you call that. Uh, and the same thing with volleyball to serve that. So we're like hitting it to the other person to begin the game. Yes. Yeah, so we got the waiter example over here. We could have a, a government example. So in government, like you could be serving just like you're serving time in prison, like you're serving the people. So you're trying to help them uh, and do something, you know, in, in that way. So I'm serving, like to serve, I could serve, serve the people. So it's a similar idea to like serving food, giving food to someone else. <coughs> or I could be helping people in some way. Even if you're in prison, like you're serving time, the serving time. So that means like you have to kind of provide that. It's a duty you have uh, to give that to the community. Okay. Or we could think about, uh, let's see, what's another good example? So if we have 
like serving, like a, a thing could like be, yes, so we have the serving jail time, prison time. So you could say like he served, he served five years. So you could serve five years in the government. You could serve five years in prison. You could serve five years in the army or the Navy. Yep, the army example, very good. Yep, so the same thing, so to serve time. So I could serve people, I could serve time. It's like I'm working for someone else, all right, to help someone. Like right now I'm serving you. I'm working for you. I'm trying to help you understand something. So I'm serving, this is like a service. I'm helping you, okay? So we could also have like, like this marker, this marker serves as a writing implement, all right? So to serve as something. So this marker serves as a writing implement, so a way to write. It serves as a, as, a, as a way to write. So just like a person can serve as something, right now I am serving as a teacher. Maybe if I'm uh, playing basketball, I serve as the center of the game, or I serve as the center of my team. Typically we wouldn't say like a player is like serving something, but you could say that. The, the, the grammar works the same way. Okay. But we can also talk about not just people, but things. So this marker could serve as a little like head, head scratching thing. So yes, uh, let's see, Conero, uh, your service is exceptional. Yep, so if you're talking about someone else, uh, saying like your service at the restaurant is very good, your service is exceptional, your service is exceptional. All right, how about school lunch? Well, you could serve school lunch, okay. And so this is just talking about serve. It's even just one word, but you notice uh, instead of getting like one example, the point is getting a bunch of different examples and understanding how it all works. So you can serve yourself. If I go to a buffet restaurant, the waiter doesn't serve me, I serve myself. So I get my own food and give it to myself, okay? So if you go to a restaurant, uh, like if they have water or it's a buffet or something and you help yourself, uh, you can say like, you know, like the, the service is, you know, it's like for you, like serve yourself or help yourself. Ah, you were telling me, like my, my service is good. Okay, all right, fantastic. <laughs> all right, but it was a good use of the sentence. All right, let's see. So yes, an internet server, yeah. So it's providing information to somebody else or some other computer, internet service. So from yes, from serve, we also get service. So serve, like the verb, and service being the noun, or if we're talking like a, like a gerund kind of, uh, like we are providing a service. All right, everybody getting this though? So the English as a second language approach, we want to just learn a word like serve and just repeat that. But we're not really feeling very confident about it. We just think like, okay, serve means to give someone food. Okay, that's, that's kind of the idea. But if you see like, wow, like serve means to like provide something for somebody else. And so we have like a duty we're trying to share or help or work for somebody in some way. And it's, it's not really a definition that gets you fluent, it's understanding that gets you fluent. So sentences, uh, Eileen says, sentences with the verb serve on Google. Uh, and then we have a bunch of sentence examples. Yes, so you can do this on Google as well. Today, after a long time, I am revisiting your channel. Very good, thank you. Watching from Thailand, really love how you present the lesson. Glad to hear it, my loyal servant. Yes, a pen also serves the purpose of scratching a head. That's true, yep. So something can serve many purposes. Like one person can also serve different people. Yes, you can also serve money to the waiter, although we wouldn't really, if we're talking about paying for something, we don't really think about that as like a service. It's more about like, just kind of like we're trading, we're providing something, okay? Link says, great idea about suffixes, prefixes. If we know what they, uh, what they mean, we can expand our vo vocabulary automatically. Yes, so prefixes and suffixes are another good thing to learn, uh, just like phrasal verbs. So phrasal verbs are really just ways of connecting uh, different vocabulary together in different ways. And so if I know 10 words, but I can combine them in 20 different ways, then my vocabulary increased even though I didn't learn more vocabulary. Isn't that cool? 
why, one of the reasons I love phrasal verbs. All right, let's see here. Great examples. YouTube is serving the live class. Yep, exactly, says uh, Patata. I think everybody's getting it, all right? Now, what we've talked about so far, like, uh, I'm not really calling this grammar, but you understand how it works, like, with something like to serve as something else, okay? So, like, I might serve as, uh, like, a, a coach uh, when the other coach of my child's baseball team is not able to come. So, I serve as the coach. Like, it's my duty. I'm helping them. I'm providing that, okay? And so the more we do this, so farmly serve, uh, people will get free water. Yes, sometimes people do. Like if you go to the pharmacy, they will get, <laughs> you get free water over there, especially in Japan. All right, Rose again, news channel serves awareness to the public. Yes, so you can serve information just like we serve food, like we are providing information. Now I write down my relationship and experiences that I remember and also repeat that every single day. Is that correct? Now I write down my relationship and experiences that I remember. I also repeat that every single day. Is that correct? Uh, Lalu, are you asking like if the sentence is correct or that you should do that, something like that? Let me know what you mean by that. Yes, yeah, so a mother might serve her children. Same thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, what does got served mean? Well, there's a uh, kind of slang meaning, and that's a slightly different, meaning like you got, uh, like, and, it's, and often with slang, they'll take a word like serve and then give it the opposite meaning. So you're like, well, you got served, like someone, someone like tricked you or made you like lose or something like that, like you lost badly and it was embarrassing for you. So that's an interesting thing, like, like a word like bad can mean good, you know, just depending on the situation. But this is why words don't really mean much by themselves. And you understand them by connecting a network where like, wow, like there's sometimes where it works and sometimes it doesn't. But you get like a, a nice connection between those different things. All right. Is uh, deserve derived from this verb serve? Actually, I don't know if deserve. It might be. That's a good question. I would Google that. I don't want to tell you it does and then it does not. But yeah, it sounds like it could. It could to deserve something. So to deserve, like I could think of a connection in my mind how that works. Like if I am being served, so someone serves me, then maybe like do I get something that's for me or not? Like if I do get something and it's appropriate for me, like a good thing or a bad thing, like I could be punished. So if I steal this marker and I get punished for that, I, I deserve that punishment. So the punishment was served and I deserve that punishment. So it sounds like it would be a connection. And even if it's not like, if there's not like actually an origin or something like that, you can still use these stories to connect these ideas. All right, so to deserve something. Good, everyone's got good questions over here today. Uh, let's see, Sanatana says, are you still in Japan and serving as an English tutor? So you'd say as an English tutor. Uh, I do live in Japan, but I do not serve as a teacher uh, in like any classroom, anything like that. The only teaching I do is these live lessons uh, and then teaching my kids or maybe like some friends or something like that. Uh, but I don't have any like any classroom lessons anymore. Yes, both words are from Latin. Yeah, I, well, I figured that. Yeah, yeah. So describe some questions using serve. So again, like I could say like, if I want to use this and put it in a sentence, how may I serve you? So how may I serve you? It's like a more polite way of saying, how may I help you? All right. Or you can ask like, who will be serving me today? So who will be serving, S-E-R-V-I-N-G, me today? Who will be serving me today? All right. So everybody's getting it, though. All right. So you, you, as you start getting examples from each other, you think, oh, yeah, look at that. And like your brain makes those connections. And you can feel that happening. Again, that's the magic of learning English as a first language, where you spend a bit more time. You're not worrying about repeating something. The point is to understand things very well. Okay, and then you will feel much more confident. All right, I would like a day about learning get meanings. It's hard for me. You like the word get? 
Uh, I have a whole video about Git on the channel. Just search the channel for Git and you will see that. All right. Good evening, teacher from Brazil. You would say, I'm from Brazil. I am from Brazil. Yes, we do have lots of people uh, from Brazil. Here. person serves. You would say you serve your children or serve your parents. Same thing. Warking, warking stuffs. Uh, do you mean working stiffs, I think? <laughs> A working stiff is working. A working stiff. Now, this is the problem with like getting the katakana hatsung, the, the pronunciation of Japanese. It's like walking stiff. Walking, walking stuff, walking stuff. Yeah, it like, so it would sound a little bit different, but working, a working stiff, does anybody know what that expression means? A working stiff? We'll see it. Send me, I bet somebody knows what that means. What does this expression mean? A working stiff. What is a working stiff? All right. And let's see. Rambo says, since you've served a lot of people with good lessons, you deserve a million thanks and millions of subscribers. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that from Rambo. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Rambo the diehard warrior. Yes, so in, uh, just to correct this, you would say, since you've served a lot of people with good lessons. If you're talking about like multiple lessons, you deserve a million thanks and millions of subscribers. Very good though, that's a complicated sentence. Pablo says, do you have content from someone starting to learn English from scratch with this approach? Uh, actually, if you go, you guys know my other channel, my secret channel? <laughs> it's not even like I, I call it my, uh, my secret channel. I don't, I don't post anything up there. This was years ago. So when I used to teach in, uh, I used to teach in a, uh, like a kid's uh, kindergarten. And in and, and elementary school, kids would come there too. But I, get, I got to use like the English as a first language approach when I was teaching those kids. Uh, and so if you go even here on YouTube, I'll write this clearly. So this is Shaberi Sensei. If you search that, uh, you can see videos of the little kids I was teaching and like they, they became good speakers. Uh, because I was teaching them this way. But every, everybody, like, you, the, uh, you learn the same way in your native language. So the proof that this works is, like, everybody speaking their native language. So we know it works. Uh, the, the problem is that people think it doesn't work for learning a second language. The interesting thing is that people will still learn English as a second language anyway, even though that definitely does not work. <laughs> so people continue to learn that way even though it's not working. Um, but yes, like you will, you will find that. I, I don't put any new content up there. I probably, probably should. So one of, one of the reasons, like I, I made a book for Japanese kids and my, my art is actually pretty good in that book. <laughs> you can see that on the channel. Um, but the, if you want to see like a child teaching themselves this way, then just get Frederick. So Shabari Sensei was initially a way to, to start teaching people, um, like basically teaching people this way uh, but I didn't have I, at that point people didn't have smartphones so the only way I could teach people was with video but now that I have software I can I can teach people and you can learn by yourself uh, with Frederick R I C K so F R E D E R I C K so if you click on the link in the description of this video, so down below this video, uh, then you can learn about this. But Frederick, if you give that to someone who doesn't speak any English, they can teach themselves English as a first language using that. It, it follows all the same principles I'm talking about in this video. All right, to answer that question about working stiff, a working stiff, just if you think about a person who is physically stiff, like this, this is a stiff marker. It doesn't bend very well. Uh, so a working stiff is a person who's just like, you know, like a regular kind of corporate employee and they don't have a fun life. They're just working in an office and just, you know, kind of a boring existence. So it's almost like a, like to call someone like a stiff is like a dead body because they don't move anymore. So that guy is a stiff. So he's a, like a working, a working stiff. It's almost like a dead body kind of mentally and physically. They, they just go to work and they... 
they don't enjoy what they do. That's a working stiff, a working stiff. So you can, you can talk about people like, uh, in general, um, like, like you could talk about working stiffs as like a group of people. All right. Uh, let's see. I will make a favor and serve your majesty. Like, yes, to serve your majesty. All right. Lalu says, uh, I mean that I wrote down all over course of my life on paper only in English. And I remember and repeat that <clears throat> like some holy book. Is that correct? This method to learn. Um, well, like repeating something. All right. Let, let me make this very clear for people. So if I, if I teach you a word, like let's say I teach you a word like in Japanese or whatever. Uh, what's a good way to do this? Or it, let me just teach you some new English then. Maybe that will be easier. So if I give you a new word um, like, like perplex, maybe you've heard this word, maybe you have not. All right. So I could, there are different ways I could teach you this word. So one way is I give you a translation through your native language. So I say something like, to, to perplex, all right? To perplex something, uh, and, uh, or like to perplex someone, like I find this lesson perplexing, all right? So I could give you a definition of it, and then I could just repeat that again and again. Uh, or I could give you a bunch of different examples of people using this. So you could hear like my mom talking about something like, wow, this problem is very perplexing. Or someone at a company is saying, like, like we have a very perplexing problem over here. Uh, like, we don't know what to do about it. And as you get those different examples, the meaning of it just becomes under understandable automatically. So you don't, you don't really understand the word better by repeating it. If I just say perplex, 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 my understanding and my fluency don't increase at all. I might get better at saying the word, but I don't understand the word better. And it's understanding that lets you speak. So rather, again, we want to build a network of like different examples and not just people using the word in a different context, but different people. So we might have like, again, the company president, he has a different voice. Like he, like he says, like, that's really perplexing. And then another woman says like, wow, that's perplexing. And you can hear like the slight changes in the pronunciation. Uh, <clears throat> so this is how you would do it. Like it's, it's useful to write down vocabulary, but it's, it's even more useful to try to think of 10 different examples of something. So often I will learn even new vocabulary in Japanese, but like if I only hear it one time, and even if I try to just like repeat it again and again, uh, if it's easy, I might remember it, but often I will just forget the vocabulary. I might even like the vocabulary. I hear something and like, oh, that's a cool word or an expression or something, but then I just forget it, all right? This is why we need the review. But if we just repeat something, it's not really likely to help us become more fluent in that vocabulary. So the point is to build the network and to really understand what something means. So after we get lots of examples, it's like, wow, perplexing, like, like it's difficult, it's confusing, it's hard to understand. It's perplexing. All right, thanks a bunch. All right, it looks like people are talking with each other over here. Let me go back and make sure we have all these. All right, uh, Drew Sensei, look at that. What oh, Tom knows in Japanese. All right. Uh, maybe we can talk to serve in the army. Yes, so again, you talk about serving in the army. I understand the three languages, uh, B-R-E-S, and what is that? Uh, what is that? Is that Brazilian Portuguese or something else? I don't know. And Spanish and U.S.? Google says working stiff is a person who has an ordinary job that is not well paid. Yeah, and so you could look at a Google definition of something, but like that's a perfect example of how the definition is just like, it doesn't really help you understand. It's like, okay, they're just a person in a job. Like, do you know if that means, like, is it okay to call someone a working stiff or not? You don't really know. So the point is to get many more examples to really understand what something means. So if we hear like uh, working stiff, like that's not like a good thing. You don't want to be a working stiff. <laughs> a lot of people like, maybe they are, but if you call them a working stiff, they will be upset about that. So those are things you learn as you build that network, as you get more examples of something. All right, uh, I am good too, thanks for, oh, okay, you guys are talking with each other, all right. All right, 
Yes, complicated, says Fatima. And again, you can get a definition of something, but the point is to really understand it like a native. So a native just, they know because they've, they've heard so many examples of something, and that's how they feel very confident about it. All right? All right, I think everybody's getting it, though. Let's see, how long have we been going? We've been going for about an hour. And I think, okay, we're getting down here. All right, everybody's just talking with each other. All right, nice to see lots of comments. <laughs> All right, uh, so hopefully everybody gets this. Uh, I will go back and review uh, this very quickly, see if anybody has any more questions. We have a little bit more time left. Um, but the, the basic idea, if we draw our elephant again, for anybody who was late, this is gonna be uh, even faster. Uh, image uh, of the elephant over here. So at the beginning of this video, I'm talking about the parable, so the story, the lesson story, uh, of the blind man and the elephant. And the basic idea is that a blind man who doesn't know what an elephant is, if you say, here, touch the elephant, if the blind man touches the elephant's tail, he will think, oh, the elephant is like a rope. And if the blind man touches the uh, elephant's foot or leg, he thinks, well, the elephant, the elephant is like a tree trunk. Or if they touch the tusk or the trunk or the ear or the side or whatever, different parts of the elephant, they're going to feel differently. They're going to understand, uh, like, they're, they're only going to get kind of one piece of the elephant. And this is how most people learn languages. So they only understand something like this. They don't have the whole picture, and that's because they don't really understand it like a native. It's because they get one example of something. Here's a translation or something like, I tell you what elephant means. Uh, but this is, so it's, I'm trying to help you understand it visually. Um, but the point is, like, you should get lots of uh, examples. So uh, an actual word like elephant is pretty easy to understand because you can look at something like that. But if I'm teaching you a new word like an alien language and I just say blah, the word is blah and I show you that thing. You don't really know what I mean. You can guess like, oh, he's talking, he must mean elephant. But maybe I mean big. Maybe I mean animal. Maybe I mean, you know, the color of the elephant or whatever you don't really know what I mean. It's only when you start getting more examples of other things that you're like, ah, now I know what blah means. So I'm looking at, it's the network, the connection between all these things, okay? So this is how we get fluent like a native speaker. So we understand the language like a native speaker by getting more examples, getting that naturally varied review, all right? So Tom says, I arrived late, so I want to understand that about the elephant parts. Yes. So again, very quickly, uh, the parable, the story of the blind men and the elephant is just about people. You take a blind man and say, wow, look at this. Yes. So this is uh, the Buddhist teaching. Yeah. So this is, it's, it's famous not just in Buddhism or it's known not just in Buddhism, uh, but many different traditions. Uh, and so I'm just taking this as a visual example that you can think about for vocabulary as well. So you don't really understand what, what one word means by itself. The word by itself doesn't mean anything. It's only when it's connected to other things and connected to situations that you understand what the vocabulary means. And that's how you understand something like a native. So when you understand like a native, that's when you can speak. You can start speaking before you really understand something, but that's when you embarrass yourself or say something you don't want to, uh, and lots of people are not very, uh, they, they don't want to do that. So it's, it's, it's common advice, it's easy advice for parents or teachers to just say, yeah, just get out and speak. And I mean, I've told people to do that before, but like as, as like a teacher, I need to think of a better way to help people than just say, well, just get out and do it, you know? it's like. No, 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 like the responsibility is on me as the teacher to help you understand something. Because if you don't understand, and then I just send, send you out and start speaking, then it's my fault if you make a mistake, because I didn't teach you properly, okay? So again, the idea of the elephant is that if you're a blind person and you only touch one part of the elephant, that becomes your whole understanding of the elephant. But it's not true. It's not a complete picture of that. 
So just like you get a translation of one word, I get a translation of, I think I've given this example before. Uh, so if I give the example like from Japanese uh, of the word like, well, I'll give the English example of free. Now, again, like free, the word free by itself doesn't really mean anything. It's only in particular context that you understand what it means. Uh, and so if I'm trying to translate the word free into Japanese, it could be like mudio, or it could be like jiu, and those are two completely different things. So mudio is like free, like there's no price to it. Or jiu is free, like freedom of movement, like you, can, you are allowed to do something. Okay, so if I then try to translate those things back into English, it's going to give me like different meanings of that. Okay, yeah. So the same, the same idea. All right, is everybody getting it? Everybody feeling, feeling good about this? So that I, I really want to make people, make sure people understand the typical English lesson is going to give you like one example of something and then have you repeat that again and again. But repetition doesn't get you fluent. Repetition doesn't get you fluent. It's the network, the understanding of all these things together that gets you fluent, and then you feel confident speaking. Okay. If you don't understand, if you don't get it, let me know. Remember, it's my fault if you don't understand things. I like to try using you know, different ways of helping you understand this idea, uh, but I think the parable of the elephant, because it's, it's uh, well known, uh, at least some of you probably know this already, uh, but you can take the idea and think like, oh yeah, it works the same way for language learning. So if, like, if I learn the word free, like the word free is like the elephant. But it's like, what do I mean by free? Do I mean no cost? Do I mean uh, like I can like like freedom of motion? Like I can move somewhere? Like I can move some something is not like like stuck to something else? Like it's free free to move around? What exactly do you mean by that? And as you get these different examples of free, then you you start making the the kind of deeper understanding like a native. Now, for natives, like I'm, I'm a native speaker, but also like a person who thinks a lot about languages. And so, if I, uh, if you ask a regular native speaker, they might not think so much about it. They wouldn't think that deeply because it's all, it's really unconscious. And so they, they're, they're getting these understandings. But if you have a conversation with a native speaker, they will have to like explain these different things. So they will think like. So if you ask a native speaker, like, what does free mean? And they will think, well, it depends. Like, what situation are you talking about? Are you talking about, like, freedom to do something? Like, I am free to travel? Or are you talking about free, like, it doesn't cost me any money? What do you mean? So both of those are correct, but it depends. You want to use the right thing in the right situation. The context, yes. Leslie's got it. Leslie's getting it over there. All right. All right, let's go back, uh, check chat, make sure we're doing all right here. Let's see. What do you think that YouTube videos couldn't get you fluent in any languages? Some people say YouTube videos could just give you a passive knowledge. Uh, Gansham, I, I think the, the problem with YouTube videos, it's not, it's not like the, the medium itself that's the problem. There's a few issues I have with YouTube. Uh, and I can say this even as someone who makes videos on YouTube. Um, but uh, the two, I, at least the two, I don't want to talk about like, you know, 50 different problems with YouTube or whatever. So I think YouTube is valuable. Um, the, I think the first problem with YouTube is it's like it's, it's, it's disorganized. Uh, I won't even say it's disorganized. Now, this, this, is an interesting, this is an interesting lesson right here, like disorganized. versus unorganized. So disorganized versus unorganized, and this is another perfect example of how you learn things by making connections. So we got the word organized in both of these words, but then we've got disorganized and something that's unorganized. So disorganized means we're gonna take something that's already organized and now we're gonna like mess it up, to disorganize it. But unorganized means like we just have something that's 
It's like just some information or some things or something and we don't know, uh, we haven't like organized it yet. So this just means it's not organized, but disorganized means it's messed up. So I'm thinking in my mind, what's the, what's the good word or what's the, the best way to explain this? My basic problem or my first problem with YouTube uh, is that you've got lots of information and it's like, it's like being in an ocean of information and you don't really know what to learn. You don't know how to structure that information and how to learn with it. So it certainly is possible to get fluent by yourself, even with YouTube, uh, if you learn with information the right way. Um, but most people are not really learning with YouTube like that. Like they, they think they need like an English lesson um, rather than like just getting lots of content about a particular thing and getting naturally varied review. So like I'll watch a bunch of YouTube videos, like YouTube language learning videos, and it just teaches me some random content. Like here are 10 phrases for travel. And okay, I learned 10 phrases for travel. And then I go to another video and it's like, here are a hundred phrases for waking up in the morning or something like that. Um, and just like, like I'm not, I'm not really getting fluent in that information because it goes, it goes in one ear and out the other. So I've, forget, I've forgotten the information uh, as I learn it. So very few people are like, they, they, can't really, um, they can't really get the information they need in the way that they need it. So the information is on YouTube, but you have to know like what to search for and then how to learn with that information. And then even if you do learn, like try to learn English as a native speaker would, uh, you still have lots of questions about what things mean. So it's, it's, it's just more complicated. Uh, but the second problem is that it's distracting. So it's, uh, you have lots of information on the video you're watching and then there's a bunch of other videos you could watch. Like if you're on a computer or on your phone, there's lots of, um, you know, like information about, about stuff. So the mind, like you, YouTube is, YouTube is not designed to help you get fluent in English. It's designed to just keep you watching more videos. That's the whole point of YouTube. So they keep showing you more YouTube videos. So you watch more advertising. That's, that's the basic idea. All right. But you'll notice like my channel doesn't have advertising on it. So like all of my videos, you won't find uh, like any ads in front of my videos <laughs> because like I understand that's distracting for people. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so those are my, my big problems with YouTube. So it certainly is possible, but you have to know how to like use YouTube, get the contents you want, organize it and still understand that information by yourself. So without having a person explain things to you, you can do it, but then you have to teach that stuff to yourself. This is how I got fluent in Japanese. So I didn't have anyone, I had to like go learn the information and figure out how it works and get naturally varied review and, and all of the things that I teach. All right, so Leslie says name of your, your two please. Oh, you mean like my channel? My channel is just English Anyone. So you can look at uh, below this video you'll see the, the channel name, English Anyone. All right, but that's the basic, the basic problems uh, for me uh, with YouTube as like, like a language, like for people learning language. All right, uh, let's see if I skipped some people up here. All right, so Lalu says, it's so difficult to remember unlimited word without connecting so, so that why I wrote down the new word and connect it with my stories in life. Yes, if that's what you mean, then that's fine. Yes, you can definitely, uh, you can definitely take that information and, and make more connections with the information you already have. That's a great way to learn. All right, Park Jays, so Pac Jays says, awesome teacher you are. Well, thank you very much. All right, let's see. It's nice to see you again, Drew. Today I was actually watching your videos, actually listening to them while working. Nice. Yes, listen to me. Don't do your work. <laughs> Unless you're, I don't know, like an artist or something like that. And Sham, okay, I answered that question already. All right, you're a versatile teacher. It makes me admire you even a lot more. Glad to hear it, Rambo. Well, that's high praise from Rambo. Look at that. Have you seen all the Rambo movies? You know, I've actually not seen First Blood. I should go, I should watch that sometime. I haven't seen it though. All right, Lalu says, okay, I got that one already. Let's see, Leslie's getting it though. Leslie, what country are you in? Where are you from? Let me know. Uh, El Cira says, South Brazil, nice to see you again. Okay, 
everybody we serve us thanks let's see pablo says i hear something that sounds like wrapping up to signify that it's a summary at the end of an explanation is that correct i should apply this approach to approach to learning yes so the like when i talk about wrapping something up it's like imagine you've got like a present or you've got your lunch or something like that. Well, it's time to wrap that up. We're gonna close it so we can move on to something else. So this is a phrasal verb to wrap up. So you can physically wrap something up, like if I uh, have a, a present or something like that for someone. So if I'm going to wrap something up, but I can also talk about wrapping up like finishing something. So I'm going to go do something else. So it's time to wrap up this video. All right. And, but yes, but you can definitely use that as well. Screwed grunge band. Professor, do you know how to memorize or to use the perfect way to use phrasal verbs? Yeah, I teach both of those on, uh, on my channel, so how to learn phrasal verbs. Uh, so that's also in Fluent for Life, and I, I don't want to explain it here because I've done it many times. Uh, and the same thing with memory. So if you learn... If you look for, I've done a couple of videos about that, but I have uh, like a, a, a program about this called How to Remember Any English Word. That's also included in Fluent for Life. Do you have an online English course? Yes, so I have a few things, uh, but you can click on the links in the description below this video if you'd like to learn more about those. Uh, but the two main ones, uh, well, there are kind of three main ones, um, but the, the two ones I have linked below are Frederick. So this is the app which will let you teach yourself pronunciation, listening, vocabulary, uh, the same way natives do. Uh, so that's an app, and you can download that uh, and start using it for free. And then we have uh, Fluent for Life, which is taking all these ideas about how to learn like a native speaker, and they get you fluent automatically. I'm a multitasking person, says Brittany. <laughs> Let's see, I've never watched a Rambo movie. Yeah. Uh -huh, indeed, Drew, I, I had some uh, moments with your video. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm Brittany from Peru. Oh, uh, look at that. Brittany from Peru again. Is this same? Uh, this is the same Brittany. You're like the college college student Brittany who was listening before, I think, maybe. All right, thanks for the explanation. My pleasure. Your methodology helps me learn Arabic too. Yes. So the things that I'm teaching are not only for English learners. It's just I focus on English because that's what I teach. Uh, but you could certainly take the same, like, Instead of English as a first language, it would be Arabic as a first language or Chinese as a first language or whatever. All right. Yes, I'm the one who brought the whole college here. Nice. <laughs> Is a distraction uh, a word branch of traction? Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a, that's a good thought. So you could like have traction on something, but to be distracted is like to remove, to be taken from the track. So again, uh, even if a word doesn't have like, a, like an origin like that, you could still think of it that way to help you understand the word. That's okay. All right. How old Jose? Okay. Look at that. Nice to see everybody over there. All right. Well, it looks like we've come to the end of the video. I think people are, are getting it, though. Everybody getting this idea? You'll notice a lot of my videos, we cover the same topic, but I like to give different examples, uh, teach very, uh, like, varied vocabulary so people get it already well look at we've been going for 72 minutes <laughs> i'm not i'm not like talk radio or whatever <laughs> so talk radio people listen for like you know five hours or whatever people i lose my voice you can hear my uh my voice going after you know even an hour ah but yeah and i'm on i'm kind of on vacation right now too <laughs> I'm enjoying my, my vacation. All right, let's see if we got anybody else. So Leslie says you are a very, or you are a patient teacher. All right. Well, see, but people aren't really asking me anything. So it looks like everybody, you guys are just talking with each other. <laughs> you don't need me anymore. We're all, we're all finished over here. We can wrap up. We can wrap up the video. Uh, you are really a great person. I appreciate all your efforts. I'm glad you I really like your style of teaching, teacher. Too bad the class is go, uh, going to an end. You would say getting to an end, or you can just say ending. Thanks for the class, Pablo says. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, we do need you, Teacher Drew. <laughs> what does wrap up mean? So I just gave you the example before, like we could take a present, like, uh, like here's even a plastic bag over here. If you go to a, a store, they will ask you, like, shall I wrap that up for you? Like, do you want a bag? Or is this like a gift wrap for someone? So I'm going to... 
There you go, I just wrapped up. It's like literally wrapping around the marker. So I just wrapped up the marker. But in the same way, you can take this and like wrap up something figuratively like, uh, you know, like a lesson. So it's time to wrap up the lesson uh, so I can go enjoy lunch and you guys can enjoy your day over there. Remember, I've got lots of videos. Definitely download Frederick. Every, let me know if you downloaded Frederick uh, so far, if it's already been uh, helping you or not. Let's see. Uh, beginning of the end. Dran says, you gave us hope in becoming fluent in English language. Yes, you'd say in the English language. Or you can just say getting fluent in English. In English. Let's see, I need a good book to learn phrasal verbs. You don't need a book to do that. Like I have a whole program. It's called The Visual Guide to Phrasal Verbs. If you search my channel, you will find it. The Visual Guide to Phrasal Verbs. Uh, and so it will show you how to learn them like a native and understand them and start using them fluently. Uh, I need to practice English, but I can't. All right, I'm, I'm going to end this last thing because every video, I get at least one person who says they, they still need to like practice speaking or whatever. But the point of this video is that the, the practice really comes from the understanding after you've gotten many different examples of things, okay? So the practicing comes by yourself. You don't need to have a, another person to speak with because in that case, like either you repeat something to yourself, like you're just talking to yourself, or you're repeating things to other people. But understanding comes as you get more varied examples, not just from you repeating things to yourself or other people. All right. So I understand but need to speak. Yes. My whole point is like you're, you don't understand. <laughs> so you, you, the, the, the needing to speak part, like... You need to speak to do what? It's not to learn. It's only just you start using the language. Okay? So you don't have to spend time practicing speaking with someone else. The whole point is that you're, uh, you're, you're just understanding the language better by getting more examples. So some people uh, have already watched the, uh, the espresso video on my channel. So how to make espresso. You can see a couple of different examples of that uh, on my channel. And that video will show you an example of how you learn by yourself. So you're just getting uh, naturally varied review. Okay? So, like, oh, I'm an English teacher in my country. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, actually, we have lots of people who are uh, English teachers uh, that follow my channel. Even, like, big YouTube channels follow my channel as well. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you search, you should do a search for Get Fluent with One Trick. <laughs> and you'll see, like... Lots of people that copied that same video. <coughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, it's really important to understand, like, I know you think you need to speak to get fluent, but speaking is the result of the understanding. So just get the understanding first, and you can do that by yourself. So it's very easy. You do it with me, or you can do it with YouTube, whatever, but you should just understand the language better. When you understand things really well, that's when you feel confident about using them. That's what I teach. So, and this is the same thing that you will experience yourself learning your native language, whatever that is. What, Danilo is back. Nice to see you there. So if we have, um, like even in your native language, if you learn, if you hear some new vocabulary, and again, this is not in English, it's in your native language. Maybe you hear something on the radio, you don't really know what it means yet. You probably heard something and you're just like, what is that? You know, I, like I, maybe you forget the word or whatever. I don't really know. Um, but when you start hearing it from other people or you read it in a newspaper or hear it on TV or something, that's where you start feeling uh, confident about the vocabulary. So then you can start using it as well. Okay. So you don't need to wait until you uh, like, I don't know, find someone to practice with. The practicing is done by yourself. All right. And then you can the, the actual speaking practice is like a small thing um, as you after you feel confident about the vocabulary. Let's see. Mohammed says, you know, my own problem that I have been studying English for years, but can't manage to think in English. I mean, I have to think in my mother tongue and then translate it to English and then abstract. Yeah. And so, Mohammed, like your problem is because people taught you English as a second language. So they taught you through your native language. I'm guessing that's Arabic. Uh, whatever it is, though, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's the same problem with any language. So if you're trying to learn English through a different language, it's like a filter in your mind. So you hear information. 
like the we have a like a lesson we'll just put like a letter a on that as an english lesson uh and if you can get that information like here's you over here and we won't even draw the like box around that so this is you here if the information can go directly to you and you can get lots of different examples of it then you will become fluent in that information all by yourself but if we're going to take that information, here's the English, and we're going to translate it first into Arabic, so or whatever, let's just use Japanese as an example, uh, and then we're going to also make it slower. We're going to slow it down. Uh, we're going to teach you different vocabulary that natives don't really use, so the vocabulary is different. When it gets to you, oh no, you didn't really understand anything, and it's like, this, this language that you understand over here, it's gone through all these filters, and this is, it's completely different. Like this language versus, you know, this language over here. So the real thing you need to do is get direct examples in English, just like native speakers do. All right? It's not complicated. It's just like, so you, you said, I need someone like you in my life. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm here. Again, that's, that's what Fluent for Life is. That's what all the videos on my channel are for. So you're not, like, you're, you're commenting to me, but you're not speaking with me. We're not having a, a vocal conversation, but you're still improving. You're still getting more fluent. Okay? So again, if you learn like a native, you will learn to speak like one. That's how it works. But if you learn like a student, you will, you will still have uh, trouble, you know, connecting ideas and, and saying things without... Um, you know, without translating or hesitating or thinking about grammar rules. Tomoko says, uh, unfortunately, I have no chance to put out my English in Japan. Uh, well, like, where do, you, where do you live? Do you live in like a, a, small, a small town? What part of Japan are you in? Let me know. But again, like, you, the, the improvement comes by yourself. You don't need someone else to, to speak with. It's like you continue to learn and you understand things. You're like, oh, wow, I, I really understand what this means. But then when you do have the opportunity, the, the language will come out naturally. All right? So don't worry about looking for people to practice with. The understanding can come all by yourself. It's nice if you have other people there too, just like me you know, teaching my own kids. But if they were watching videos of me, it would still give them the same input. And so they, it's, it's really my job to make sure they understand the language really well, uh, and then, you know, then they can, start, they can start speaking it. I got you my question, answer. I'm learning as a native learn and naturally very rude. I'm going to just ask you that question. I have listened. Let's see. Okay. I have listened to many times. Yes. And so I repeat myself, but in different ways. So you notice a lot of my videos cover the same general topic of fluency, but I try to give different vocabulary and teach things in different ways. All right? Yes, so we want the, uh, the words. We want to get the, the vocabulary out there. But we also want to make sure we understand uh, what we're learning and not just trying to put more vocabulary in our mind in like an unorganized way. Pablo says, I try to speak with my wife only in English to practice, but we always stop doing it. Uh, in a couple of days, it's an extra effort. Yes, and the reason it feels like effort is because you don't really feel confident about what you're saying. So if you're like, oh, like I, it's, I'm really straining my mind to speak, then you're, you don't really feel very confident about what you're saying. So for me, I can speak Japanese all day and like it, it doesn't, it, it's not like, oh, like I'm really working hard to speak Japanese because I'd spent time learning Japanese like a native speaker. All right. So when I was learning Japanese through English, so learning Japanese as a second language, that's what I did for about a year when I came to Japan. And when I did that, like, yeah, I had to think a lot and it was it was very frustrating and it took a lot of time and, and it was it was tiring to try to speak in English. And people have have studied this. And I, I actually made a video uh, on my channel talking about that, about what happens in your brain when you're trying to speak a second language, depending on how you learned it. So if you learn a second language uh, in that language, like so you're, if you learn English as a first language, even if your native language is Spanish or whatever, then you will start uh, speaking naturally and your brain will not be thinking so much. It will just naturally help you speak. But if you learn English through your native language, then the brain is working very hard. That, that's what makes you very tired. 
So it's like physically like, oh, like I'm, I'm using a lot of mental energy to communicate. All right. But I could speak all day like in English or Japanese uh, and it doesn't it, it's not like making me tired. It's fun for me to do it. The only reason I can't do like a, a radio show is because I lose my voice after about an hour or so like you can hear it now. <coughs> mm. All right. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, like don't don't worry about like if you want to do something with your wife, get a bunch of different examples of something. So whatever that is, like, like the espresso video that I have on my channel, uh, Pablo, uh, so you can find, like, if you're interested in something you can do together, find whatever that interest is. So if you and your wife both like gardening or you both like some kind of movie or something like that, I want you to get a lot of information about that topic. So you don't have to say anything if you tell your wife uh, like, hey, I've got a new idea. Drew, this guy on YouTube, told me that we can become more fluent without speaking. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find something we like, whatever that is. Like if you both like, you know, good wine or you like talking about shoes or, you know, whatever that thing is, then just get lots of content about that. Just watch different things on YouTube and you will naturally, you will naturally start speaking about it. It will, it will just come out naturally because you'll feel more confident about the vocabulary. I promise you this works. Like you're doing this every day already in your native language. All right. Uh, yes, it's very nice to have other people to learn with you. Yeah, but I mean, you can, you can still learn that way. You're learning with other people. Like if you watch other YouTube videos about, about stuff, about things uh, for native speakers, then you can get in the comments and talk with people if you, if you want to do that. When I try to imitate my children, uh, or when I try to imitate my children, look at me as a crazy man. <laughs> yeah, again, like, like spend more time trying to get input. This is the easy, this is the, really the easy part about language learning. It makes it much easier. Uh, why, when I talk to myself, I use English. Yeah, you can, you can do that as well. Uh, you can, some people feel confident doing that, uh, but they might not feel confident if they're not really confident about the vocabulary speaking with other people. Pablo, again, true and lacking of vocabulary in many situations, but I have no problem speaking in English at work. <clears throat> yes, this is a common situation with people uh, who either they, they speak with English speakers like in their office or you know, on a Zoom call or something like that. But it's, it's a perfect example of you getting like lots and lots of input and understanding about, um, you know, like your work, whatever those things are. So you might hear like things about your particular job, like vocabulary for that. You hear it again and again and again in different ways from different people. So it's exactly what I'm talking about. So you're getting all of that, like the understandable messages, the real speech, the naturally varied review, all the things that you need to get fluent. And so the other things that you don't talk about or you don't hear about, you might get some vocabulary and you might have a passive vocabulary about that but you will feel confident about the things you speak about. So what we do in Fluent for Life is we, we take this circle and we expand it. So we help you start talking fluently about other things besides work. So that when you're you know, in, in a conversation, if you're in a meeting or whatever, uh, then you will still enjoy uh, you know, lots of conversations beyond work stuff. All right, so that's what we do in Fluent for Life. All right. Um, Tom, again, Teacher Drew is teaching how to be fluent in an effective way. Yes, I'm just, I'm, honestly, I'm telling you what to do. Like, do the same thing you do for learning your native language. Do that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that easy. All right, uh, Patata says, uh, Teacher, could you ex uh, please explain how to use literally, precisely? I still can't figure it out. Uh, yes, and this is because a lot of people use literally incorrectly. Uh, but literally, like, this is literally a marker. It actually is a marker, literally. That's what we mean by literally. But other people, like they use it, it's like, well, it's literally a thousand degrees in this room, okay? So they're not using it literally, like they don't, they're meaning the opposite and they, they don't, they're not using the word correctly. Like, like I'm literally teaching you right now, all right? I'm, I'm actually doing that thing. 
So literally just means actually, but you will hear people misusing it, uh, and that's why it creates uh, confusion. I think I actually did a video about misused words like that, and I talked about literally. Fun Searcher says, Coach, I watch a lot of YouTube video to learn English, and now I can understand almost 95% what you are talking, and I guess I can communication to others, but not fluent. What exactly should I do to improve? What should I do to improve exactly? All right, so this is a perfect example of someone who can understand, but they still don't, they, they haven't spent enough time with the vocabulary. That's why there are lots of mistakes in your writing. So let me, let me rewrite this for you. So first you have coach. So it, be, it should be C-O-A-C-H. Um, so I watch a lot of YouTube videos to learn English. And now I can understand almost 95% of what you say. So not what are you talking, but of what you say, like the words that are coming out of my mouth. I understand what you say. You could also say what you are talking about, but you really just mean understanding my words. So you'd say what you say. And I guess I can communicate with others. All right, so communication is a noun. Communicate would be a verb, but not, but you could say I'm not fluent. What should I do to improve exactly? So what you should do to improve exactly is actually review the information more so you don't make any mistakes in your, in your learning, in your understanding, uh, and then in your speech. So when you really understand something, if you get lots of examples, like your communication, your written communication should be flawless. It should be like perfect, like perfect what you're writing, uh, and unless you're, you're trying to use something new. But if you have mistakes, it means you don't really understand that as well as you think you do. So the difference is, in a conversation, I might hear something from someone else and understand what they mean, but then I can't use that same grammar or something back to that person. So if I want to use that too, I need to spend a lot of time uh, reviewing that information. So that's how you do it. All right, uh, how do I get fluent with phrasal verbs? So the same way you get fluent with anything else. You get lots of naturally varied review, different examples. Uh, and the same thing we do in, in the Visual Guide to Phrasal Verbs and Fluent for Life. All right, so yes, let's please uh, talk about shoes and handbags. It says Nils, Nils is back. There we go. Uh, yeah, anyone who's watching my videos is probably not a beginner, but maybe, maybe you think you are. Allah says there are blind people, but they are writers and poets, and many of them hold certificates in many disciplines. What if I say is that listening is the first reason? I don't know what that means. What I want to say, what I want to say is that listening is the first reason. I don't know if that's a question or not, but uh, very good. Let's see, Ram says pronunciations. My name, Rama Morthy Tamil Nadu Mad Madurai. <laughs> okay, <laughs> pardon me, I'm, probably gonna, I'm definitely gonna pronounce that incorrectly. Uh, but this is like an example of where you were, like I can read something and I recognize that's your name, but it takes me a little bit of actual practicing to, to be able to say that. So that's the value of actual speaking. Uh, but I can learn, like learn what your name is and learn that pretty quickly. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Drew, I know a lot of vocabulary, but I'm not able to speak fluently. Yes, and so this is, I've made many videos about this. You should watch the video about the three levels of understanding. So you need to go from the awareness level to the ownership level. So that's where you really feel confident about the vocabulary and you can use it fluently. Rambo again, since I'm not from an English speaking country, having listened to a single word emitted from an English speaking person is beneficial for me. I can learn from that how to pronounce it correctly. Yes. Tomoko says, do you live in Japan? Are you, if you're asking me, yes, I live in Nagasaki, Japan. Uh, let's see, I love to learn English too, Jose uh, says, belongs. The problem with me is that I teach elementary school only A, B, C, and hi, hello, I want to use my language with high school. Okay, well, get better. There you go. If you want to be a, a teacher and speak with more people, get more examples. Ildar says, howdy. Drew, nice to hear you. Yeah, it's nice to be heard. All right. Are you speaking platforms at a high price? Where they, are your speaking platforms at a high price? Where are they? Uh, if you're asking about like the price of Fluent for Life, like what, what is fluency worth to you? So for me, I live in Japan um, and like the difference between not being fluent and being fluent is like, that's worth like thousands of dollars to me because I can speak with 
like I can speak with business people. I can easily communicate on the phone. I can talk with people. I can go anywhere I want versus not being able to do those things. Like it's, it's fluency is very valuable to me. So if someone had a program like I have, nobody has that or that I've, I've found uh, for learning Japanese, but I would pay, I would pay a lot of money for that because it's, I'm looking at like the value of fluency versus the money that I have. And so for people who want like guaranteed fluency, that's what, that's what I give people. It's guaranteed. And so if you, tr it, like a lot of people spend actually a lot of money to travel to an English speaking country and, and take language courses. So they'll spend money on an airplane ticket. How much is an airplane ticket right now? I don't know, but let's say, let's say I'm a Japanese person uh, and, and traveling from Japan to the United States to go to classes. Uh, let's see, how much is the airplane ticket? Let, let's just say it's $1,000. And that's just one way. Like, it's probably more expensive than that. I don't know, depending on when you go. Uh, and then if I take, like, how much are English classes at a, at a school in, I don't know, wherever. Like, pick some place in, in the United States. Let, let's, just, let's just say you pay only, like, five, I don't know. Let, let, let's, just, let's just say it's another, like... Thousand thousand dollars. I've never taken an English class, but like you know, we, we can imagine like you've got the class, you got like food that you have to buy, uh, and like paying for a place to live or something like that. So it could become actually very expensive, and maybe you can't do work or something else. And even after you pay for all of that, it's still not guaranteed that you'll get fluent. So some people like. Everybody who takes this class should get fluent if it's a good class. All right, that's kind of the point of having a class. Like if you follow the class, it should get you fluent. But most of them do not. And that's why these, they, they don't have like a, uh, like a guarantee. I don't think I've ever seen that like in a regular class like that. I don't know, I mean, Duolingo doesn't guarantee fluency. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know how they could guarantee fluency. You're not getting enough naturally varied review of real speakers. You're not hearing how people, how people actually communicate in the real world, uh, even something like that. So Duolingo could be useful for learning some vocabulary, uh, but like learning like a native, it's not helping you do that. <clears throat> anyway, so when people ask me like if my programs are worth it, it's like, is it worth it to you? If, my, if, if you don't need to speak, if it's not valuable for you to, to speak, then I wouldn't join my programs. <laughs> Because it's not, it's not important for you to speak. The people who join my programs are like, like they could, uh, like they need English for their career. Like they're a doctor or a programmer or an engineer or something. Uh, or they're, they like to travel uh, or they like to, uh, I don't know, like they're running a company. It could be like a CEO or something. I got lots of like business owners. Uh, also, lots of people in university, like like people who are studying in the United States. So they go take English programs, but then they join my course <laughs> because it actually helps them get fluent. All right. So again, like if you're thinking about just like like a, a program being expensive or not, like if I'm if I'm like a business person, uh, and I'm saying hey, uh, if you give me five dollars, I will give you like a hundred dollars, then everybody would do that because you can easily see I'm like you know, paying, paying more money for, for getting a certain benefit, all right? But it should be guaranteed, okay? So I guarantee what I do because I'm the one who gets you fluent, all right? Like, you don't, you don't have to study a bunch of information. It's me. Like, I give you the information that gets you fluent. So that's why I can guarantee what I do. It's like me, like, coming to your house and, and like, building something for you. I'm just, like, building stuff inside your head. All right. I know it sounds a little bit weird, uh, but just like the stuff we do, like all the examples I give in these YouTube videos, uh, that's what actually gets you fluent. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Okay. I think we got we got a few a uh, few more questions. Repetition is the key when you learn English. No, it is not. You should wa watch the previous video I did about repetition because this this video right here is actually saying. Uh, like repetition, like it only has a little bit of value, uh, but naturally varied review is, is much more valuable because repetition doesn't help you understand anything more. There are lots of reasons actually why repetition is not very helpful for you, uh, but like the main ones are that it's not helping you understand more. You could repeat a word again and again, but it doesn't help you understand more, and your brain actually is 
uh, getting more bored of, of hearing something over and over again. So yes, I learned English as an app called Duolingo. Do you know, Jose? Uh, so yes, I learned English as an app called Duolingo. Do you know, Jose? Yes, so some people are using Duolingo and like in the English in that sentence is incorrect. So like that program, maybe it didn't help you learn something or whatever, but you can just say, like I learned English with an app uh, or like an app called Duolingo. All right. Yes, sometimes I visit the Duolingo. Yes, so you could say sometimes I use that. Thanks for the great classes linked. Hey there, does age matter in becoming fluent in any language? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if, like, let's say there are people who are 85 years old watching this video right now. They are still learning new things in their native language. If you can learn new things in your native language, you can also learn new things in a different language. You just have to learn it like a native speaker. That's the difference. It becomes more and more difficult to learn languages as you get older if you keep trying to learn the traditional way. That's the problem. Uh, so of course it's more difficult, like your brain is just like, ah, this is really stressful, I can't remember these things, it's very demotivating for you. But if you can understand something like a native, just like you do in your native language, then it's easy, it doesn't matter. So yes, I spent a lot of money for speaking English, says Tomoko. Yes, and so this is, a lot of people spend much money, you know, they spend a lot of money trying to do something, um, and it's not guaranteed. So I want to make sure if I'm teaching you, like, it's, it's kind of my responsibility, you know, to get you fluent. All right, let's see here. How much time do we have left? Oh, no, we got to close it down in a minute. Thank you. I love you, my favorite coach. Glad to hear it. What's well, that? Getting lots of varied reviews would definitely get me to own what I'm studying, but I think it would take much time and focus on keeping myself studying one thing. Yes, so Wasim brings up a good point about, like I just mentioned before, the problem with review. Um, and so the, the point of naturally varied review is it's, it's different each time you do it. So you might hear the same words, but you hear it from a different person, or you hear it in a different tense or something like that. So you're going to hear something again and again. So we all maybe do this in our everyday life, whatever our job happens to be, like if you're a doctor, you're gonna do the same kind of surgery on different people. It's gonna be a little bit different each time though, all right? All right, and let's see, I don't agree that repetition doesn't help. Uh, well, keep, keep repeating them. <laughs> if, if, if you disagree, that's fine. Like I, I don't mind people who disagree with me, but like you can, you can look logically at it. Uh, if you continue to repeat something, uh, you can, you'll get like a little bit of benefit. So I'm, I'm saying there is a little bit of benefit from that. You just get much more benefit from naturally varied review. All right, movies about real life and now, okay, you guys are talking with each other. All right, I agree that understanding is very important, but pronunciation plays a role too. Yes, and so you naturally varied review, part of that is the same thing for learning pronunciation. So if, if me as a teacher, if I just say repeat after me, and I tell you a word like, hello. And I just tell you to repeat this after me, like hello, hello, hello. Number one, you're not going to be prepared for other people who sound different than me. And you're also not prepared for people who use different vocabulary than this. All right. So hello is just one greeting that you might use. You might hear, hey, what's up? How's it going? How's the family? How you been? How you, how you doing? Other things like that. All right. And then you might also hear like, hello, hello. So someone just said like, hello. They didn't say hello. Or they said, hey, hi, how's it going? And when the pronunciation, like, uh, you learn the pronunciation by getting all of these different examples. All right? And like, uh, I, I don't want to like push this too hard because if you're, if you're already doing something and you think it works, and you're getting fluent, then just keep doing it. You don't need to debate with me about whether it works. Um, but for me, like this, I wouldn't teach that way because it's, it's not preparing you for the real world with all of the different people you will meet. So I might meet a British person who says like, hello, hello. And an American guy is like, hey, they're both greeting me in different ways and, and neither of those are exactly how it is in the, the listening practice for the textbook, all right? So yes, repetition can be helpful, but it's not as helpful as getting naturally varied review. Naturally varied review is like way, it's way better because it simulates real life. 
and how uh, when you get into a conversation, you need to be prepared for different things. Not everyone is going to say hello like a robot in the same way. All right. Uh, let's see. Yingi says, hello, everyone from Thailand. You are my first English teacher since three years ago. Thank you so much for teaching me and the people around the world. I really appreciate it. Glad to hear it. It's my pleasure. All right. Anomino. Anomino. Perez says, hi, Mr. English. Mr. English, huh? I have a question about how can I avoid to commit mistakes of pronunciation or to have a limited vocabulary in certain moments? Do you recommend use filters while I remember what I wish? I don't know what that second part is, but uh, the answer to your other question, to, to have good pronunciation, to use grammar correctly, to say the right word, to have the right word when you need it, it's all from learning like this. There are basically only three things that you need this will be our last point here, because I'm losing my voice. So again, uh, English as a first language. This is our fluency triangle right here. You need real English. So real English meaning the real vocabulary that natives use in real conversations. Uh, you need to get understandable messages. So just like I've given you before, uh, typically a lesson will not come from just one thing because if you hear a word one time, it's not, it, it doesn't really help you understand or learn that thing. So you've got to hear different angles. That's the naturally varied review. Naturally varied review, V-A-R-I-E-D, naturally varied review. So understandable messages, you can also hear this as comprehensible input. It just means information you can learn all in English without needing to get translations or grammar explanations or whatever. So these are the things you really need to understand. And once you get this, that solves all of the problems. So that, that's what helps you speak without translating uh, because you're not, you're not learning through translating. So if you learn through translations, you will think about translations when you speak. If you learn grammar rules, you will think about grammar rules when you speak. Okay, and then naturally, view, naturally varied review will give you all the examples that simulate real life. So it can't give you everything. I mean, that's just impossible. But uh, it will give you lots that help you understand the vocabulary well, help you remember it, and then help you communicate correctly. That's it. All right, let's see last ones again. Uh, so Rambo says, I can understand most of what people talk. Again, you'd say what most of what people say. Uh, like you're talking now, but or like you're saying now, but in when I try to read an English newspaper, I find it really difficult to comprehend. Yeah, it's different English, so you need to be you need to spend time preparing for that. So it's a different kind of speech. You'll notice I speak quite simply. I'm not using lots of idioms and slang and phrasal verbs. I do I put a few phrasal verbs in, but usually I explain what I'm talking about. Um, but that will help you understand. So you need to spend more time with the information you'd like to understand. And that's the value of having a teacher. Uh, let's see. All right, no, 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 no. Enough for today, folks. Drew is already tired. Let him go for lunch. <laughs> yes, uh, and I'm losing my voice too. That's the biggest issue. I, w I would love to stay all day and answer questions, but my voice, uh, I'll sound like the Godfather. Uh, I can't speak. <laughs> I can't speak correctly after a while, uh, but you get the idea. Uh, if you are late to the video, I do recommend go back, at least watch the beginning of it because it's really important for you to understand uh, how you should be learning, okay? I'm going to keep hitting people with this and then continue to give you different examples of things, but the core idea is the same. If you understand English as a first language, you will be able to communicate in English as a first language. It's really that simple. All right, everyone have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.